Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. Well, I've got before me here a Chrysler 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. And this particular engine has been used by Chrysler since about 2011 until present day. It's used on Dodges, Chryslers, and Jeeps. Now, like with any engine out there made by any manufacturer, you're going to have some common points of failure. And this particular engine right here has the typical point of failure for the 3.6 liter Pentastar and that's a failed cam follower and the typical symptom for this particular fault is a tapping noise either a light tapping or hard tapping noise coming from the top end of the engine now in all fairness I feel like I should stop the video and make a point to you real quick when I say that this is a common point of failure for the 3.6 liter what I mean is that if the engine were to fail, this is one of the common points that it does fail. Now, Chrysler has made a bunch of these engines. I mean a bunch, probably on the order of millions of these engines. So the amount of engines that fail in this manner compared to the total amount of engines that were produced by Chrysler is a relatively small amount. Also, it's fair to mention too, it was brought up to me by a viewer that Chrysler actually updated these uh, rocker arms that I'm, I'm about to show you. Uh, I think it was around 2017, he said. Uh, don't quote me on that. Do your own research, of course. But uh, I do believe that Chrysler has updated this particular part. So I'm not sure if it's fixed or not. Uh, I really haven't heard anything past the 2014-15-ish mark there. So back to the video. So let me take you down here, show you how this thing failed, and uh, maybe discuss some repair options for you. Okay, so here it is. This is the valve train on the right cylinder head here, and this can happen on the opposite side too. So there's, I don't think there's anything special about this right side here, but you can see this cam lobe right here doesn't quite look like the other one. See, this is a normal looking cam lobe here, minus the rust, of course. This has been sitting for a little bit out in the elements. But that cam load there, you can see it's worn down in the middle. And that's because the roller on that cam follower or rocker arm has failed. And you can see that that roller's not even, well, actually half of it's missing. And that cam is actually riding right on the rocker arm, and it shouldn't be. It should look more like this one right here. You see that cam follower? The roller on it is actually making contact with that lobe right there. This is not making any contact whatsoever. You can basically just see straight through. You see my glove back there. You see I'm wiggling that rocker there. So all that slop, that's what causes the knocking noise or the tapping noise in the upper end there. And this one actually had another one. Where's it at? Right here that failed too. You can see that cam looks the same way there. So that's what the problem is there. And I'll, I'll take this off. I'll take these cams off here and the, uh, the cam followers out. And I'll show you a little bit better with it out of the engine there. Okay, so I got the camshafts out. Now I can show you a little bit more clearly what's going on with these cam followers here. You can see that roller right there. It's just all jacked up inside there. It's not supposed to move around like that. And what goes on on these cam followers the rollers they got needle bearings inside there and the needle bearings fall out and it allows these to uh, flop around inside there and it creates all kinds of play between it and the cam lobe so you can imagine whenever that cam lobe spinning around and you got all that clearance between it and the rocker arm it's going to slap it when it goes by and that's what makes that ticking noise there and by the way cam followers is another term for a rocker arm they're both the same thing, just two different words you can use for the same part there. Now, one thing you want to be aware of uh, on this, too, is that the lifters can become collapsed. You want to make sure that your lifters are okay in here. So, let me just show you this one here. I think this one right here that I'm pulling out is actually collapsed a bit. And you can see on it, it's a little bit shorter than this one. So, it's supposed to be at the same height. We actually need some lifters on this engine also. Now, what's the best course of action to take when it comes to repairing something like this? Now, I'd have to say that's all relative to how bad a shape the engine is in. At this point, this engine here has a lot of damage to it, but if you were to catch something like this pretty quickly and you don't let it go, there's a good chance you can get away with replacing the rocker arms. Now, I wouldn't just replace one rocker arm while you have one side of the engine torn down. I would replace all of the rocker arms. Not only that, uh, I would also suggest, even if your lifters are showing to be good, I would replace them too while you're in here. The name of the game 
is to do this repair once and not have to go back in there. And that can be very frustrating to have to go back in on a job like this. Now, in cases where this symptom's been let go for a long time and you have damage to your cam lobes, such as what you see right here, of course the camshaft that's damaged is gonna have to be replaced. And this can happen on either the intake cam or the exhaust cam. So this camshaft would need to be replaced, but I wanted to also bring your attention to your cam caps and I actually took this cam cap off earlier to remove these camshafts and noticed that there is some scoring inside there. Uh, this is not the worst case I've ever seen before, but if your cam bearings are worn out, you're going to have to replace your head too. You can't just replace your cam caps and get away with it because the other side of the bearing is a part of the head there. There's no bearing inserts that you can put into this to, to rectify this. So just bear that in mind while you're in here. Now also bear in mind too, if you happen to have a camshaft that doesn't have damaged lobes and you're just replacing the rocker arms, when you take those cam caps off, if you find one that's damaged, usually there's corresponding damage to the journals of your camshaft also. So you wanna inspect your camshaft journals and make sure that they're okay also. And of course, if they're not, you wanna replace them. Now, in my opinion, if I'm ever replacing a head for bearing damage to the cam caps, then I would replace the cams anyway. That's just me. Now, I know this should probably go without saying, but this whole get up here on this cylinder head, you got the same thing on the other side there. So be sure everything's good to go over there while you're doing repairs on your vehicle. Now, I suppose that there are some extreme cases where you may actually have to replace the whole engine due to a failure like this. There is a lot of metal content inside this engine here. You can see on this uh, camshaft trigger wheel here, it's magnetized. You have a ton of metal on there. And whenever these cam followers fail like that and they start to dig into the uh, cam lobes, it's basically just a, uh, uh, just a metal dust factory. And it's just blowing that metal dust throughout the whole engine. So. Who's to say how much of that gets past the oil filter and who's to say how much is caught by the oil filter? You don't know, but there is some bearing damage on the upper end here. So there may be some stuff going on down on the bottom end that I don't know about yet. And I am going to dig into that and I'm making a video on the teardown of this engine. If you're interested in watching it, I'll post a link in the description. Check that out if you're interested. But realistically, for the most part, I think you'll find that a whole new engine is not going to be needed. It's probably going to be one of the simpler repairs. So folks, that's about it for this video. I sincerely hope that this helped somebody. If it was a help to you and you enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like. And if you wouldn't mind, subscribe to my channel. Also, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. I'll have more very important information down there that you need to know. So please read that along with the disclaimer at the very end. Thanks again, folks.